the original owner had won it at a slot machine at a casino. The second time <laughs> that I almost did a track day, uh, I had at this point started my YouTube career and I had recently acquired the cheapest Z4 in the country. And this thing was actually pretty cool. Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage actually was the one who sent it to me and he said, hey, check this out, this thing's kind of neat. And I was like, you know, it was a Facebook Marketplace post and I was like, a lot, of, a lot of mileage on it. It was like 280,000 miles, which I was like, you know, even for me, I'm like, Oof, yeah. But the guy wanted, I mean, he wanted a lot for it even at the time. This was before the big kind of the, everything got really bad. He wanted like 7,500 or eight grand for it. And I was like, <laughs> absolutely not. Long story short, I ended up acquiring this Z4 for actually less than five grand, if I recall correctly. And the thing about it was, first and foremost, the worst wheels I've ever seen on any car, really just looking at, and then certainly the worst wheels I've ever seen on any car I've ever owned. But I could look past it for the price, and most importantly, 10 years of service records of everybody that had owned this car had just said yes to whatever the repair was, which is very, very rare for these cars. So yeah, it had 280,000 miles on it, but it had everything done. I mean, it was pretty much ready to roll. I mean, it was amazing. I couldn't, I, I couldn't believe it. it. The only thing scaring people away from it were the wheels and the miles. I bought it dead of winter. You know, it was a 19 degree day out. I still was like, we gotta make sure if this top works, you know, all this stuff. Brought it back. Turns out that car had a great story too, um, which I love. The original owner had won it at a slot machine at a casino. It was one of those cars that was on the top and you know, that you think nobody wins, but apparently this guy did. And he was from Wichita, Kansas. So he won it and he drove it back to Wichita, Kansas and he didn't sell it. He was like, this is my car now and I love it. And he did everything for it. I mean, he just loved it. And then apparently, you know, passed it to one other guy, a friend of a friend or whatever. So it never really got too far away from him. So these records stayed with it and the maintenance stayed with it. And it just was a good car that was also turned out to be you know, like a slot machine car. So I was like, I love this. You know, I, I rolled with it on my YouTube channel. Like the, it's the lucky Z4, you know, this thing is, is awesome. And it was a very interestingly optioned car. It, uh, it didn't even come equipped with cruise control because I guess, surprise, surprise, the guys stocking cars to give away on an accident are not trying to buy like the top trim, anything. So it had the M Sport suspension, no cruise, and like not even automatic climate control or heated seats, which is something that every Z4 has. So very weird. It was only the 2.5, unfortunate, but again, the price is undeniable. And you know, I'm making videos here. It's just for fun. And it had been a long time since I'd had a convertible. I was very excited about everything in this combination. So I'd had the car. I finally started to buy the parts for it. I had fixed the obvious things that were wrong with it. I'd done the things. I'd taken it to the car ninja. We had done the basic stuff that you would do. But I started to buy the upgrades for it because I wanted this to be, you know, kind of my track day car. What better time? A 280,000 mile Z4. I'm not going to devalue it and I'll have a convertible to drive around that's fun in the meantime. Like, this is great. Uh, somebody had already straight piped it for some bizarre reason. Uh, it was the only mod on the car, but it sounded great. And, you know, here I go. I ordered new wheels, amazing, you know, Bridgestone RE12R tires from, you know, Tire Rack. I had, those were the stickiest, best stuff I could, you know, get for what I wanted to do. New suspension, uh, all new bushings. I had, you know, Johnny buy the bushing kit to do the trans bushing on the car. I mean, we had the trans or the rear end out. I mean, this car was getting about to be gone through, but the big bulk of the cool for YouTube visual mods were, were, were on their way. And the night before I had dropped the wheels and tires off separately, can't carry them into Z4. I took them over to Johnny shop. I was like, we'll be over tomorrow. Wheels, suspension, you know, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow rolls around track day, a couple of weeks in the future. Uh, but you know, gotta get that stuff on. And uh, it's, it's day of, and of course I'm making a video of it, but I'm just heading to the shop. And of course I'm taking the Z4. I'm cruising top down. It was a gorgeous day. I have to pass kind of by some very familiar intersections on my way to Johnny's shop. It's not far away. They always say, you know, the, the accidents always occur, you know, within that close 
proximity to home. This is something that I had to, <laughs> had to outline on my channel to show what even happened because what happens next is still baffling to me even. It's a T intersection, meaning, you know, makes a T. <laughs> and I'm going on the, the end that is up against, you know, there's nobody can go this way. So I'm kind of going straight through on the top part of the T. I have a green light. The only possibility are for the people opposite of me to turn across traffic to go down the stem of the T, if you will. If you've been driving for any period of time, you know, if you have a green light and they don't have a solid green arrow, you know, they're kind of just yielding and they can go at any time. Wichita drivers are pretty unpredictable. And I usually am un under the habit of kind of covering the brake going through an intersection like that because I've been pulled out in front of way too many times to not do that. I was going 45 or so. I start covering the brake. I make it successfully through the stem of the T part of the intersection beyond a shadow of a doubt worried about somebody hitting me now. So I'm like, okay, cool. And I let off and I get back on the gas and I just, the airbag explodes and it just, I'm like, you know, it, it's the biggest jar I've ever had in my life. And next thing you know, I mean, you just hear that awful metal whack, crunch pop, boom. It's a sound that's undescribable unless you've been in the accident. The car grinds to a stop because I was going 45. And next thing you know, I'm just like, what happened? I did my little system check of like, this arm, this arm, this leg, this leg. I'm like, okay, that's good. Airbags, cars steaming, everything, you know, it's just nuts. People run over to me being like, oh my God, are you okay? And I mean, at this point, I can't see, you know, what happened. I was like, I don't really know, first of all, what happened. And second of all, how bad the accident is. I do know my neck hurts. And I also know I really want to get out of the car. <laughs> and I've got a crowd of people around me now who witness this and are like, just crap, you know, rushed over to me. I try to open the driver's door and it's jammed shut. I'm like, oh my God, you know, and I'm trying to just get out because this thing's steaming and the airbag's got that the powder. And it's, it's just not a position you want to be in. Thank goodness for the convertible part. I've got all these people being like, please stay still. Like you don't know what's broken. And I'm like, I did the, I'm okay enough to get out. Let me get out. And I just used what adrenaline I had left, hopped out and was able to see what exactly had happened. First of all, Z4 absolutely horrifically destroyed. When I got out of it, that's when I was like, oh, oh my goodness. I knew it was kind of bad when my neck hurt right then, even when the neck, the, the adrenaline was still going. I'm like, oh my God. And then I looked, the car that had hit me was somewhere it elsewhere. And I was like, what had kind of happened? And then I started piecing it together from my other thing. And I was like, I remember being like, I'm safe to go through this intersection. This white Civic can't possibly do anything now. Turns out what had happened was it was a very young girl driver. I mean, I'm talking 15 or 16. And she was trying to turn yielding. And she was about to go. And she saw me. And she went to slam on the brakes. But because in her panic, floored the accelerator. Which is why I had no time and no, nothing to do and why the accident was the way it was. People are like, oh, if somebody pulled out in front of you, you would have T-boned them. How did you end up in a head-on accident if somebody pulled out in front of you? And I'm like, because she had her wheels aimed just perfectly in my lane and just floored it. And inexplicably in the time, I was like, Whoa, what happened? And the good news about this was, first of all, I had six witnesses sticking around being like, we saw what happened. She floored it into you that I've never in my life seen that. That's insane. You know, but are you okay? Yada, yada. I mean, now we've shut down this intersection. It, luckily it's Saturday, but traffic was building up. The cars can't go anywhere. Neck's killing me, but nothing else. Like I'm not even like, I, it was a, amazing. If you look at the car, that's a 40 mile an hour, 45 mile an hour head on accident. I mean, people die from that. And the Z4 with all of those miles on it, who knew that the airbag would still work? Who would have known? And thank goodness it had the sports car long hood on it. And thank goodness, you know, there were, I started thinking about all the other cars that I could have been in that I had. Like the Maserati has the airbag light on. Same accident, I would have been hurt. You know, any other car, shorter thing, like the same trajectory, I would have been very hurt. So believe it or not, as unfortunate as the accident was, the lucky Z4 was lucky one last time and saved my life.
We all love Amazon, but most of us have had that experience where you buy something with a lot of glowing reviews that shows up and it's just a piece of garbage and it wasn't what you thought you were buying. Unfortunately, Amazon can be full of bad actors and fake reviews and things that just don't live up to what you think is gonna come in a day or two after you order it. That's why New on Amazon has been developed. It was developed by Patrick Cupolari, a friend of the channel, a good storyteller who's talked about BMWs and McLaren F1s and things like that. And he's a huge e-commerce expert and you can learn more about that on his YouTube channel. But he built a site of trusted sellers well-reviewed products and things that he actually knows will show up looking the way that you want them to. And so it's a great way to filter out some of the noise and some of the bad products that you might otherwise discover on Amazon. So check out New on Amazon at the link in the description below and thank them for supporting VinWiki this month.